Hi, welcome to French Cheeks Top Tip Videos. I'm Craig Phillips, the brand ambassador, and in this video, I'm gonna show you three different uses for French Cheeks finishing coat. The first use, we're gonna apply it to the top of the finished painted item. It's dry. Now, this was originally painted with French Cheeks Original Range. That's gonna give it a lot more hardware and endurable finish to be able to wipe down. The second one, I'm gonna mix it up with some of French Cheeks Frenchine. Now this is a powder, comes in different colours to create a bronze effect, a copper effect, a gold, a silver, and that can all be applied to different finishes. We'll talk more about them in a moment. And then the third demonstration I'm going to do is using it for decoupage, applying artwork to the top of a tabletop. Okay, so I'm going to take the top off this unit to be able to work on it. Now we mentioned a moment ago that this is already painted with the original range, so it would require sealing. Now you could use French Cheeks wax, of course, which will be perfect, or you could use the finishing coat. I'm gonna use the finishing coat. So it's straight out the bottle. I've given it a little bit of a shake up. Just gonna pour it into a little painting tray here. I'm taking a clean dry sponge, dipping that into there, wiping a little bit off just on the tray, and then I'm going to apply it directly onto the surface and I'm going to brush it all the way across. What we're aiming for is to get two nice thin coats that covers the whole area with a little bit of drying in between them. You don't want to put on too much and have it too thick. So I've got a tendency of applying it on first like this, making sure we cover the entire area and then we can actually more or less just wipe off any of the excess finishing coat off. I'm also going to apply it around all the edges. Now I'm going to leave this to dry for about 20 minutes and then I'm going to apply a second coat. I'm also going to cover these little kind of knobs that hold it all together. Quite often we get sent questions on social media and one is, can we use them both on furniture? Well, yes, of course we can. You can use them individually. However, you can use them together but only in a particular order. You can put your finishing coat on first, let that dry, and then you can apply your wax on the top of it, like a brown wax to give it that aged look, but it has to be done in that order. Whilst I'm waiting for this finishing coat to dry before I give it a second coat, I wanna show you a couple of examples of what you can apply it to. Now we mentioned earlier, I'm gonna do a demonstration with decoupage on top of the tabletop, it doesn't have to be a wooden top, it could be a metal surface. Now I don't know what Silverline are gonna think of what I've done to their shovel, hopefully they'll like it, but it doesn't stop there on metal. Plastic. This particular item has had the crackle effect on it first with the paint, left to dry, and then it's had a decoupage all the way around it there, which I think that looks Fantastic. So they could be plastic pots, they could be stone pots, terracotta pots. They can even be ceramic tiles, porcelain tiles. It really doesn't matter. You can just really be creative with any type of artwork that you get. Chickens. <laughs> so now this is dry, I'm going to apply a second coat, which is the exact same principle as the first coat. Directly out of the bottle, onto your sponge, just wiping it off the sponge so it's not too wet, and about the same pressure as we started. I'm kind of wiping it on, but then also wiping it off again with the actual sponge, and a little small amount really does go a long way. And now I'm gonna wipe that off my sponge, Turn it over to the drier side, 
going around them edges. I'm not quite wiping it off, just wiping off any of the excessive finishing coat. All I have to do now is leave this to dry and then you've got a good solid waterproof finish on there. So the next demonstration I'm going to apply the finishing coat to the Frenchine. So I start off once you've picked your colour I'm going to choose the copper colour and get a little spatula apply some of this lovely coloured powder into here add a small amount of finishing coat and then take my spatula and give that a little mix up I want to mix all that up so there's not really any powder left in it. It's nice and liquidy. So that's about the consistency we want to create to use this on most products. So now I'm going to apply this to the legs of the table that I will be doing my decoupage on shortly. So just dipping my paintbrush in. Not getting too much on the brush. And then I can start to paint directly onto my legs. And again, like all French Cheeks paints, it just glides on. It really is a pleasure to use. So as you can see, I've got a little bit carried away. Originally, I was just going to paint the three legs separately. However, it goes on so easy. It looks fantastic. It's such a joy to use. I just want to paint everything with it. So that is our table legs and stem complete. So my third demonstration using the finishing coat is decoupage. Now this is something I'm new to, so bear with me. It's real quick and simple to do and fun. Decoupage can be any type of patterns, material, artwork, paper, wallpaper. I'm going to actually demonstrate with a serviette. Now it's a plain one, standard one. It's got a lovely pattern of a flower on it. What I have done is cut around the actual pattern. Then you start to take the serviette apart. Most of them will come in three layers. You peel them apart really carefully. You're not going to use the back bit. And then your second layer, it's hard to get it started, but once you do, you can just about pull them apart. It's a little bit slower getting the first layer off. Oh, it starts to get a bit easier as you come down. Okay, so them two layers we're not going to use. The pattern layer, of course, we are. Now we've got that prepped and ready. I'm going to screw the top off here. Place this down here. So we firstly check to see that our pattern we've cut out is fitting in the area and we're happy that it goes in here and then this is where the fun starts you get your finishing coat onto your tray I'm getting a little bit more of a stiffer sponge now getting relatively plenty on there it's wise to start on the creases make sure you flatten them down the best you can and that will help get rid of the creases. So you can be quite firm with this, just pressing it down so you're letting that finishing coat absorb out of the sponge, go right the way through the tissue so it absorbs through and sticks to that painted surface below. 
And like with everything, the more you do this, the better you'll become. Now, if you fancy joining some of the Frenchy team on one of the workshops, it's worth following the French Heat Fan Forum and finding where your nearest stoppist is to you. Actually book yourself on a class showing you great ways of using different French Heat products, different techniques. Now if you're like me with your first attempt, you apply a little bit too much of the finishing coat, get yourself a dry sponge and just quite firmly press down and that'll absorb up any excess finishing coat and actually gives it a flatter finish. And don't worry about your paint underneath at the moment looking a little bit of a different colour because it looks a bit white and milky. Once this dries it will be transparent so you won't see any of that. But for my first attempt, I think that is looking good. All I need to do now is let that completely dry and then add another coat on there just to protect it. So hopefully I've given you some inspiration and ideas of how you can use French Cheeks finishing coat. And Pam, especially for you, I've applied the decoupage on my hard hat. And for more information, hop over to the French Heat Fan Forum on Facebook. And if you're looking for a local stockist in your area, check out the website, frenchheatpaint.co.uk.